a story uh, about a, a family member in the extended family uh, that gets told often, especially at family parties and things of that nature, about one of the, the cousins who, as a little boy, maybe three years old, four years old, sees his mom doing the ironing. And he says to her, Mommy, I want to touch it. And she says, No, honey, you're going to burn yourself. Don't, don't touch the iron. It's hot. But Mommy, I want to touch it. And she says, No, don't touch the iron. You're going to burn yourself. But Mommy, I want to touch it. And she says, No. So sure enough, in just one moment, she sets the iron down, goes to get the next shirt, and he reaches up and touches the iron. He starts screaming, Mommy, 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 kiss it, make it feel better, kiss it, make it feel better. And she says, Honey, I just told you not to touch the iron, right? When you really think about it, much of human history that we read about in the scriptures, especially among the people of Israel, and to be honest, much of our own stories follow that same pattern. God says to us, don't do that. It's not good for you. You're going to hurt yourself. And we say, but I want to. I really, really want to. And he says, don't do it. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to do harm to yourself. And we say, but God, we really, really want to. And then we go and do it anyway. And the first thing we do is run back and say, God, heal me. Fix it. Heal me. And he says, I told you not to do it. In fact, sometimes we even maybe find ourselves starting to resent God that he didn't heal us immediately for the very thing that he told us not to do in the first place and we willfully did anyway, right? Certainly, I can see that pattern play out in my own life over and over and over again. Uh, brothers and sisters, we celebrate today two commemorations that have a lot of uh, overlap in them. We celebrate first and foremost the synaxis, or the gathering of the Archangel Gabriel, which is the, the second day of our celebration of the Annunciation. When Archangel Gabriel came to the Virgin Mary and told her what God wanted to do with her in her life on behalf of all of mankind, and she accepted and obeyed and said, let it be done to me according to your will. Yes. In fact, in that moment, we see that the Virgin Mary's obedience undoes the disobedience of Eve. We also, though, celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is the celebration of the, uh, the commemoration of St. John of Sinai, the author of the wonderful book, The Ladder of Divine Ascent, which is this true classic of spiritual life, and of the spiritual struggle and how we draw closer to God. St. John writes, in fact, in his book, it's the, he, his ladder, there are 30 steps that lead to the love of God. And the fourth step, in fact, is obedience. And he says that through obedience, we become warriors and athletes for Christ. He, he exalts obedience so importantly. The reality is, we as Americans and today, I think, have a rather complicated relationship with obedience. Um, we value personal autonomy and independence to such an extreme degree. Uh, we believe that this radical autonomy extends even to deciding to what I want to do, what I want to be, how I identify to the world, and how the world has to then accept me. We act as if there's only two choices in the world, right? Not having to obey anyone on the one hand, this radical autonomy, or on the other hand, the most extreme abusive forms of, uh, one might say, authoritarian obedience. You know, the, the cult-like almost situations. What ends up happening then is that we end up going about trying to live our lives in pursuit of two things. One, what can give me the most pleasure right now? And how do I avoid pain, this fear of pain? And we end up living our lives caught between this tension of what I want right now, how to experience pleasure right now, even the most fleeting kind, 
and how do I avoid any kind of pain or discomfort? In, in fact, this is really the definition in many respects of the modern therapeutic approach. And what ends up happening is that this radical autonomy makes us a slave to this tension, to this desire for momentary pleasure and the avoidance of fe and fear of pain. And so we end up not free at all, we become a slave. We end up talking a lot in the, the church about passions. We, we refer to sinful uh, vices and sinful habits as being the passions. But if you look at it, that word comes from the same word as passive. In other words, we call sin passion because we become passive to it. We become enslaved to it. We are no longer in control anymore. Right? But the reality is, brothers and sisters, a life of freedom, a true life of freedom, is found in a life centered on and in Christ and in obedience to him. Obedience to Christ's teachings, to the way of life that the church instructs us to live, and in obedience, loving obedience to the people around us who love us and whom we love, is where we find true freedom. We have, the free, we have to freely choose that obedience, like we see with the Virgin Mary. There was no compulsion, there was no guilt tripping, there was no, uh, you know, forcing her. The Archangel Gabriel lays out for her what God wants to do, and she discerns in that moment that it is the voice of God speaking to her through this person standing in front of her and freely chooses to obey and submits to it. When we obey Christ freely, we find that freedom. Christ, in fact, says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We'll read this in the first gospel reading at the 12 gospel service on the evening of Holy Thursday. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We obey not because we have to, but because we love him and knows that what he desires for us is best for us. When a doctor prescribes medicine, we don't scowl and say, you're not the boss of me, <laughs> right? We don't, maybe the grown-up version would be, that violates my personal autonomy and freedom, <laughs> right? Brothers and sisters, God loves us more than any other love we have ever experienced or can experience. He wants us to share with him an eternity free of pain, sorrow, and suffering. If what we are seeking to avoid is the most serious form of pain, that is eternal pain, and if we're seeking the greatest joy, the greatest pleasure, which is eternal joy, that is found, in fact, in following the way that Christ has laid out for us. In the same way that when a mother says, don't put your hand on the hot iron, even though it's what we want to do, the mother isn't saying it as a way to control or manipulate us or to violate our personal autonomy or any of these other things. She says it because she loves us and doesn't want us to be hurt. And in the same way, brothers and sisters, when we follow God's commandments, we find true joy, true pleasure, and we avoid the most serious form of harm possible. Let us, brothers and sisters, respond to his invitation and say with the Virgin Mary, let it be done to me according to your will. Amen. Amen.